Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. I have been looking through my channel recently and I came across something which I hadn't done for a very long time and that is looking at my hearing and looking at my hearing aids and looking at my what I call my hearing journey. So living with a hearing loss every day becomes part of you um, and when somebody says to you kind of how's your hearing, how are you, um, I don't never kind of now look at it as two separate things. Um, it is part of me, but that doesn't mean to say that it's easy. It doesn't mean to say that it's easy to sort of cope with all the time. Um, and it doesn't certainly uh, mean that it's easy having to deal with or rely on, um, probably better said, um, on hearing aids all the time just to be able to be functioning normal and to be happy and to be part of everything. Because, of course, having a hearing problem can be really isolating. Part of it is a choice. For example, a lot of the time, if I don't have my hearing aids in a certain setting or if I don't have my hearing aids in, it can be. And you may think that's strange, but believe you me, when you when you rely on hearing aids, sometimes just taking them out, the relief of not having something deep in your ear um, is is incredible. Even though you you lose hearing, it's incredible not having something in sort of last thing in, in the day or really late at night. Um, but of course, as I said, it can be isolating if you let it. So, for example, um, if I'm in a situation where um, I'm, I'm in a cup where, where a couple of family members are with me or I'm doing something or in the family home um, and it's particularly loud, like, for example, my parents may be having a conversation, my brother, my sister in law and my niece and nephew might well be around and we're all talking. Um, very often, if it's quite loud or my niece and nephew are talking or playing or or my parents are sort of talking, people are having a bit of a joke and the TV's on, that can straight away be quite difficult for me to follow. Or even just if my twin brother is having a bit of a laugh and a joke with things and he can be quite full on, like we all can be sometimes, and it's a loud sort of setting, and there's things like, for example, outside background noise, um, the TV, you might have the radio on, uh, music playing, all these things, but if you don't have a hearing problem, it's just easy. But if you have a hearing problem, very often if, some, if somebody says something to me, sometimes, and I'm guilty of doing this, I can just kind of pretend that I've heard, smile, nod, just say yes. Um, now that's backfired on me a few times where I've said I've smiled and I've said yes and, and they've waited for my next response and then actually I've got to think and then I've got to come clean and I've got to say actually I, I'm, I didn't hear what you just said. Um, so from that perspective having a hearing loss can be quite isolating um, and it can be and it can be really really difficult and you may not get that when I say isolating unless you're in that situation of having a hearing problem um, and of course if you don't make the conscious decision of turning around and saying to somebody, actually, I didn't hear you. Could you say that again for me? Or pardon, what was that? What was you saying? Um, which is a big thing to do, especially if you're with people who you don't really have that relationship with or if they're not a family member or if you're in a new situation, for example, in work or if you meet somebody new um, or even in an interview. I've had that problem several times, but I think it says more about you if you're willing to sort of say, actually, do you know what? I hold my hands up. I didn't hear what you just said. Um, can you slow down or can you repeat what you were just saying? Um, because, of course, straight away then that puts you in the situation. You're then aware of what's going on. You're aware of um, what's being said to you. And of course, you put yourself out there to say that, actually, I have this issue, but I'm owning it. It's me. Get over it. I've got this. So it is difficult. Um, I can't do it every day. No, absolutely I can't do it every day. I can't do it every time. But like, for example, in job interviews and things like that, I've had that in the past. Um, and it's kind of like I, I try to turn it into a strength. Yes, OK, my hearing is not brilliant. Um, I'm deaf on one side and I have a slight hearing loss on my opposite side. But it doesn't define me. It doesn't. It, it's not who I am. It's part of me. Um, and, and sometimes I've got to remind myself that it's not Bradley hearing loss written above me. It's Bradley, this is part of you. And you do really well with it. Sometimes, as we all do, we're entitled to have down days and we're entitled to have difficult days. Um, 
And the reason why I'm actually probably doing this clip is at the moment I'm going through some health problems with my with my groin um, and with having reoccurring hernia problems, lots of pain, discomfort. And in the background, having a very prolific bladder problem. And these are all things which in a three year period have been there. But my hearing problems have been there way back, I want to say, since I was since I was early, early teenage years was there and it's and it's kind of progressively became more and more of a problem became more of an issue for me it's part of me as i said it's not me completely it's not bradley with a hearing problem <laughs> um it's just that sometimes you may need to slow down a little bit when talking to me or you may need to be on a certain side of me um like if somebody's talking on my deaf side even though i wear hearing aids it's really difficult and what's become more of a problem is and I'm just going to show you what's become more of a, a problem throughout this pandemic is if I take a mask and I do this and then I go out somewhere and I've got a mask on. What you don't realise until you've got a hearing problem is when you've got a mask on, I can no longer see people's faces. So if I'm not directly looking at them and I'm not asking them questions, it's really isolating. So this year is being difficult for all of us. But if you've got a hearing problem, you'll know that wearing masks all the time is another issue which you have to deal with. And again, that can be really, really isolating, really isolating. Um, I think this is fantastic. Where I go and have my hair cut, um, the hairdressers where I go and I have done for many years now, um, they've actually ordered clear masks. So I think it's because they've highlighted that it's such an issue for certain people. And I'm not sure of anyone else who goes over hearing problem, but there must be people. Um, and they, they actually said to me and the lady which owns it, a lovely, lovely lady who owns it, said to me that we're actually because of, we know that you find it difficult. Um, of course, now they have to wear a visor. They have to wear a mask and I've got to wear a mask. It's really, really difficult for me to hear. So I find myself raising my voice and I find myself saying, sorry, pardon. And then you fall into silence because it's just so much of an effort. I feel embarrassed and it's just really difficult to deal with. So now they have ordered clear or ones with a window um, so I can see people because do you know what? If someone wants to say to me, when did you learn to lip read? I have never. When did you learn to be able to read the expression on people's faces? I've never done that. I think it's something our subconscious mind or whatever the correct terminology is there. I think it's something which you sort of you 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 pick up naturally it's something you learn to develop but i think just through sort of your eyes just through looking at somebody you gain that sort of ability and of course throughout having all of this where we're all having to wear masks and things now or face coverings it's really really difficult it's kind of been snatched off of me so when i go out now i do sometimes feel quite isolated if i'm not with sort of my family members or people who know the problem i've got so hearing loss is something which it's not something when you get home, you can just kick off your shoes and and then carry on about your day. It's something which is always there in every aspect of your life, whether it's day, night, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're not feeling particularly well. Or if you go out, and you're feeling quite hot, quite sort of anxious or stressed. For example, we all do at times. It's there. So it's something you have to manage. But for me, how I manage is, I mean, I have tinnitus as well, quite badly, which if anybody doesn't know that, it's um, like a high pitch. For me, it's different for everybody, but for me, it's a high pitch sort of running water sound. And I've had that since, again, early teenage years. It wasn't through listening to loud music, wasn't through abusing my hearing or anything. It was just through where I lost my hearing. It was kind of something which which sort of festered its way in and became an issue and became a symptom of having a hearing loss. It helps sometimes through wearing my hearing aids because it boosts my hearing um, or sometimes listening to soft, soothing music. For me, it's soft piano music, um, but it's difficult sometimes to manage. But um, I don't let it define me. I, I try to stay really, really positive And I always try to think that it's just a small thing because other people have these huge things they deal with on a daily basis. Um, and what on earth gives me the right to moan when I can still get out and about and I can still, yes, I give you that it's difficult at the moment with my groin and 
hernia problems and bladder problems and things, but I can still do things for myself. I can still make decisions. And there's so many more people worse off out there. So, so saying that makes me feel quite strong, quite empowered. And it makes me want to really push forward because, of course, there will be an end to this. There will be there will come an end to all of this. Um, where we don't have to wear masks anymore. Um, and there will be a time where people are in better places, aren't they, to deal with things. And I think once these problems disappear from me, I'll then be in a better place to deal with my hearing. Um, but it's, but it is, it is difficult. I'm not going to sit here and say that having a hearing problem is not, is easy because it's certainly not. But um, for example, this what I have in is an absolute saviour. It's a blessing. It really is a blessing. Now, this is a wired cross system, but I don't just have this. This is my favourite hearing aid setup, I have to admit. I mean, I've been very privileged to have a range of hearing aid settings. So I have a cross system which is wireless. I'm just going to show you. So this is, they're both in separate cases. And this is my wireless setting. So I have a hearing aid for both ears. It's wireless. Um, but going back to what I said, I'm don't forget I'm deaf on one ear, so I don't hear speech on this ear at all. But then you think, why are you wearing a hearing aid? Because on this system, they take the hearing from it takes the hearing from my good side or my slight. I have a slight loss on this side, but they take it from this ear and then it gets fed from this wire, this cable, which you can see from the back of my neck into this ear. And it mimics having hearing in both ears, which is great. Absolutely great. The, the only problem is sometimes when you move your head, this happens and I'm just going to do it where you turn your head quickly or in the winter if you've got a scarf on or if I've got a mask on at the moment, it pulls the wire, pulls it off my ear. And very embarrassingly, I don't always feel this happening in somebody, for example, if I'm with my with my brothers or if I'm with my mum or, or my dad or um, I'm visiting my nan and I can kind of see their look that something's different and bless them, they don't like to tell me sometimes. But of course, they do end up telling me, by the way, if you can hear a sound, um, Somebody's cutting something, I believe, with like a power saw. So do bear with me through this sounds. It always seems to happen when I'm doing a clip. But getting back to what I was saying. So this can be a bit of an issue. Um, I used to really worry about it with my confidence. Um, I used to worry about what people would think. But now it's part of me. I need this to function on a daily basis. So now I don't tend to worry. I have my down days, but we all do. Um, what right do I have to be down about something which I have something to manage with? I try to tell myself. Of course, it doesn't always work but um i try to be optimistic i try to be positive all the time but this can be a bit of a nuisance sometimes but i'm just going to show you so never ever do i take my hearing aids out in front of people never but i am on my channel so now i'm falling into silence on this side so it can be quite difficult for me to manage of an evening when the day gets a little bit too much it's lovely to take hearing aids out and have a break but as you can see this wire sometimes becomes a bit of a problematic issue because Sometimes I can I can sort of move and then this will come out of my ear and I'm left with a hearing aid on one ear and I'm left with it kind of swinging. As you can see, the battery's just fallen out. So this will happen if it pulls out of my ear. So it can be quite embarrassing sometimes. But if I'm around the right kind of people or if I'm around my family, it's never an issue. And very often just a joke um, or a bit of a laugh. And I can usually kind of move on quite quickly or I can make a bit of a joke. It takes a lot of strength sometimes to make a joke about it because it's such an issue. But now um, I never used to wear hearing aids all the time, but now I have to because as the years have gone on, um, I was always told that because the hearing aids, which you've seen me with then, this doesn't actually work on the hearing which I have in this ear, it copies the hearing from my good side. So whatever sense or anything I have in this ear, um, it's not being exercised or it's not being stimulated. So that's why they gave me this particular hearing aid to wear, which worked primarily on the hearing which I had in this ear, which was only a very, very small amount. And it wasn't speech. It was, for example, if somebody banged something or if there was a loud shriek or something, I would know, ah, that came from there. But the problem again with my hearing is I, and I don't remember when this happened, I lost direction of sound. And I don't kind of know when that happened. Very often people say to me, 
do you remember how you used to hear? And do you know what? No, I think because it was a gradual process of me losing my hearing in this ear. I don't remember when it happened. Um, and that upsets me sometimes to think that you can look in the mirror. I can look down at this camera now and I can think that I'm me. I'm a young man. Um, there's so much ahead of me. I like to think in my life. I take nothing for granted. I always say to my family and my loved ones and people who are so dear to me, none of us are promised a tomorrow. Um, so we should appreciate what we have today because tomorrow it could be gone. Um, I know that sounds really quite dark and quite heavy, but it is. We hear so many awful things happen and it can just be snatched off of us. So what right do I have to moan about having a hearing problem? But sometimes it's not so easy to deal with. But I don't never show that to people. I try to force a smile. And then in a couple of hours, I'm fine again. But um, so this hearing aid was for keeping whatever I had in this ear stimulated. And by the way, if you're thinking this is a bit of a cloudy ear, ear mold, um, I'm allergic to latex and my hearing aid molds have to be hypoallergenic. Um, they have to be really sensitive plastics. So that's great. And they, my, my local audiology uh, department have been amazing and the particular lady uh, the particular lady who I've dealt with for many many years knew me when I had my hearing fine or of a slight loss um, and she's been with me and supported me throughout all this time um, with my hearing changing but up until very recently and this happened this morning which is what pushed me to do this video I used to put this in and I used to know or I used to sense only slightly sense that I had this in but now I mean this hearing aids on it's switched on and when this happened I, I do not know this now, I cannot tell I've got something in. I cannot tell any use at all. So obviously at some point in the last couple of months, something must have changed. But I've kind of said to myself, and I've, I've kind of sat down with my parents about this, that, I mean, I used to have regular hearing tests all the time um, to try and keep an eye on hearing loss change. Um, but then up until a couple of years ago, I, I had a meeting with the consultant because I'm awaiting to see a geneticist because I've made the conscious decision of wanting to know if there's anything in my sort of chemical makeup background that caused this hearing or when I have children in the future, I'd love to be married and have a beautiful wife and have a beautiful family. Um, and I hope that still happens. Um, but I want to know if I would pass hearing loss on because that would be a huge thing for me. When my nieces and nephews were born from my brothers, um, it was a huge worry to me about hearing loss if I'd pass that on. Um, so that's why I want to see a geneticist. And just for my own self, I want to know how this happened. But um, I will not have any more hearing tests unless I notice a significant change and I notice the struggle. Now, the next question comes in, are my struggle, am I struggling? Do I notice a change? Recently this year, I think I'm noticing a little bit of a, a difficulty when I'm watching TV of an evening or if I'm watching a film. Very often I have subtitles on. And if I don't have that, sometimes I feel quite confused is the wrong word. But I kind of almost feel like I'm in a bubble or in a tin can and it's quite difficult for me to, to follow. Um, almost like that somebody's doing this. So possibly there's a little bit of change, but I noticed this morning, I thought to myself, OK, so I'm at home. Um, I haven't worn this hearing aid for a long time, but I need to try and stimulate this ear. Um, and as I say, I don't hear speech. I'm deaf in this ear. Um, so I have a uh, I have a very profound hearing loss in this ear. And I said I have sensory profound hearing loss, which I believe is switched off on the brain. Um, which again was difficult to take, but now I'm kind of in a better place about that. Sometimes it upsets me, but it did have a bit of a knockback and I sat back and I thought to myself, this has no use to me anymore. So what do you do with that? How do you think about that? I mean, I can't even tell you if it's on or off. I can. I can in this it. I can, I can tell you that, that this is on if I use my good ear, but for my deaf ear, no. But there we go, there we go. So not sure what will be happening with this one in the future, but this here was a top of the range hearing aid, very, very expensive, I believe. Um, but this was given to me to try and keep this ear stimulated. But unfortunately now it's not really of any use to me at all because I can't tell if it's on or, or off in this ear. So it plays a tune when it's on, by the way, I don't know if you can hear that in the video, it plays a very quiet tune to tell me that it's on and it's all programmed for me. But unfortunately it does nothing. It does nothing for my poor side anymore, but that's fine. We deal with these things. Do you know what I mean? We deal with these things. My 
system which I've been given to try and use now because the technology on my wired cross system, I believe it's a cross system because of course it's one in each ear and it's a cross wire which helps the hearing from my good side over into my deaf side which mimics good hearing or balanced hearing that is. It doesn't give me direction of sound but it just helps me feeling more confident, more like me with better hearing. So this my favourite system, I have to admit. It looks very old-fashioned, very clunky, and it's quite big, but it does the amazing job of keeping me feeling like Bradley and being normal. So it's great. I love this. I find it very, very difficult to come away from this. But I have this new system, which is wireless. But when I put these hearing aids in, it's not the same. It's not the same as my traditional setting. So this is... So I always get a little bit mixed up with this. So this is sort of the... I always say the aerial, the one which gives me the satellite signal for my deaf ear. Um, I think this is from phon phon Phonic? Phonic? This is Phonic, and the other setting is Oticon. Um, but these are great, and when I put them in, when I put them in, straight away, I hate this. And you may think, but the others were bigger. Yes, they were bigger, but that was behind my head. That was behind my head, so I didn't see it. When I styled my hair, all I seen was just a very thin tube. Um, and OK, I had this mould in my deaf ear, but you didn't see it. And of course, now I've touched my ears and things are going a bit red. But you can see straight away that I've got a quite a biggish plastic mould here. Not so much behind my head. But um, yeah, I, don't, I still don't know how I feel about it. But um. There's different settings and things on here, which is great. Um, it doesn't feel as natural sound as what it does with my more traditional hearing aids, as I say. Um, so I keep coming back to those, but I've been told that the technology for these has been retired. So no longer can I have these. So when these disappear or when these break or when they have a fault, I won't have them anymore. I do try to come over to these hearing aids. Um, I'm not so worried about the appearance. I used to be. Um, I'm not now. I think it's taken me quite a few years to kind of accept that, like my amazing mum, she gets me through dark days with my hearing, um, where my hearing doesn't define me. It doesn't define me. Um, it doesn't change who I am. And my mum always says, it doesn't change what a lovely person you are. It doesn't change what a lovely, kind person you are and all the amazing things I do for people or try to do for people. I try to help anybody. We have a very short life. Why on earth wouldn't you want to help people? That's my ethos. So I love charity and I love helping people. And um, I love standing by people. I love helping. And that's me. So my mum always gets me through that, that my hearing doesn't change who I am as a person. It's just part of me. Um, and of course, nowadays, there's so many. It sounds awful, doesn't it, nowadays? But there's so many people with things in their ears all the time. So why worry? And I don't. I try to think about that. But, um, but I think you can tell that, that some of the time I find it difficult. These I find it very difficult to kind of deal with because it's not natural. It, it literally sounds and feels like I remember when I first done a video probably about a year ago on this, which you'll see on my channel. I think it's new hearing aids, something along the lines of that. Um, and I kind of said that I would give myself time to come into this. But now, having tried it for almost a year, if not longer, it literally sounds like that I'm talking in a tin can all the time. It doesn't feel natural. It feels very clunky. It feels very tinny. I've had it adapted. I've had it changed lots of times. Um, it just reminds me that hearing with hearing aids is not like natural sound. And even though I don't remember how I used to hear from this side or when my hearing was fine years ago, um, or, or better rather, not when it was fine, when it was better, or higher levels of hearing. Um, I kind of miss that, that sort of natural clarity. So I suppose you could say I remember the natural clarity, but I don't remember how I used to hear. But it's just that clarity. I always wonder if it's ever going to come back. And I've always said to my GP, um, my family doctor, sort of audiologists and everybody I've seen, consultants, I'm still hopeful that one day I'll wake up and this will all be a distant memory. Wishful thinking, I know. But um, and they've always sort of said to me that that couldn't possibly happen because of it. the longer you are without your hearing, how long it takes. The longer you are without your hearing, then there's a lesser chance of it coming back. But um, 
And you could say mine has gradually got worse over a long period of time. And I hope touch would touch my head that that doesn't happen. That doesn't that doesn't um, happen in the future. But you have to be positive, don't you? You have to be positive about these things in life and you have to have a positive outlook. And I do. And I urge anybody else in a similar situation to me, be positive because technology advances all the time. I mean, there's always things out there. And I always like to take different multivitamins just to try and keep my health at its optimum to help my hearing as well. So lots of vitamins, a healthy lifestyle. So I always have lots. I try to have lots of fruits and vegetables. OK, I'm guilty sometimes of not eating enough. I do have a problem sometimes with um, I can lose weight quite quickly if I'm stressed. But just having everything in a balance, keeping everything in moderation, just because when I am stressed, I do worry if it would affect my hearing. Um, but I, I try to follow all the advice for good, healthy hearing. Um, and if you were to ask me what that is, so that means keeping a healthy diet. Apparently, low salt in your diet, low salt helps with healthy hearing, apparently. Um, so keeping keeping well hydrated as well. And, my, and I've often, through my own research, uh, ginkgo biloba is a is a vitamin or not a vitamin, sorry, is a herb, um, a natural uh, derived herb, which can help with hearing. I've tried it. I didn't really have too much success with that. But I mean, how would you? It's very it's very difficult to know. But I'm always on the lookout for things which can keep my hearing healthy. Um, but the main thing I always say is try to keep stress at a minimum. That's really it's like humble pie your own words type thing um i always try to try to switch off i listen to soft music to try and keep tinnitus at bay and to try and keep calm and just to be in moderation don't get too stressed take life a little bit more easier i'm working on that believe you me every single day because i'm naturally a very stressed person um but just keep everything healthy and everything in moderation and of course look after your hearing never ever listen to really loud music um take care of your hearing um and if you are in loud situations, wear something in your ears to protect your hearing. Because believe you me, I, I would love to say to people when I walk past people and they've got really loud music going on in their ears. It's fun, isn't it? It's fun and it's really cool having loud music, do you think? It's not fun when you've got to depend on hearing aids for the rest of your life because your hearing's poor. That sounds low and quite grim and quite deep, but um, I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it and it doesn't make me feel unhappy. It's part of me. As I say, I get down days, but um, it's me and I'm dealing with it fine. Um, I've got other health problems at the moment. Once that's dealt with, then I'll be able to deal with it better. OK. <laughs> and on that sign, just as I was just about to end my clip, I indeed hope that you've enjoyed watching my clip and I hope that you have You've enjoyed watching and you've enjoyed listening to my experience and stay positive, have hope. Um, and do you know what? Um, it isn't the end of the world because you've got a hearing problem. It doesn't change who you are. Um, if it helps, literally drop me a line, drop me a question. I'm here. I'm here to talk to you. I'm here to ask a question. And I'd love to share that. So by all means, please do. Um, and on that note, thank you very much indeed for watching my clip. Um, and until next time, we will see you then. Bye bye now. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Bye.